Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon. And welcome to the Bonnie Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Shane and I'm Jason. This podcast, if anything found on the website, is covered by Bipcot's no government license, as well as reuse and modification to anyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. You can learn more by visiting bipcot.org. In relation to our episode today, the Vani podcast was plugged in the Washington Post. Uh, this brought visitors from the IRS, the DOJ, and other alphabet soup, a soup agencies onto the TVP site to learn about the philosophy of Vani. Don't know how I feel about that, but it was all public information anyway. So what are you going to do? If I go ahead and mention it, we can publicly shame them, but uh, it's not going to uh, to fix their bad behavior and their inability to follow uh, terms and service of websites. Not that they care anyway. So uh, <laughs> anyway, Jason, it's, uh, it's been a while since, uh, since we've uh, recorded something. I looked up in pre-show uh, and the last time I, I was behind a microphone was uh, for the Darklands live stream back in beginning of January, I think. And uh, also the interview uh, with Irie Child, the Van Nomad from California. So it's been a while since I've been behind a mic. And it's been even longer since we've done an episode. Uh, it would have been the Faux State episode with uh, J with uh, Jason Booth. That's you. Um, Paul Gordon. <laughs> uh, Paul and Andrew. Andrew, yeah. yes. Yes. So that was uh, like December 28th or something. So it's been it's been a hot minute. Yeah. I mean, well, you've got a lot going on, bouncing around and moving to here and moving to there and... It's just it's it's tough to get together sometimes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it shouldn't be that it shouldn't be that way um, now that I'm settled in. But uh, yeah, anyway, since, since you mentioned it uh, now, I've done live streams, kind of, you know, uh, live streams and Patreon episodes discussing where I've been and what I've been doing and where the hell I am now, because you can't tell from from the video feed. But uh, but yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and just start by uh, <laughs> uh, by by giving a, a little brief overview here. So um, this test this is actually a test episode from uh, the homestead, and uh, seems like it's going well so far. Jason can hear me. Um, I think we're uh, we're doing okay. So uh, uh, the hot spots working well. But uh, anyway, um, I was in Acapulco. I was in Acapulco from the beginning of November to the middle of December. Uh, I returned to Illinois for the holidays for about a month, and then flew back to Austin. Uh, the plan was to live the wilderness Vanu life for a few weeks, make some money, and then promptly travel to Denver to tent camp there. Uh, well, after a week or so of wilderness Vanu in Texas, I decided I was going to return to southern Illinois to pursue off-grid homesteading. Uh, granted, this was my longer-term goal, but uh, there were some circumstances that uh, you know came about uh, that made it that moved it way up uh, on on uh, I guess on, on the timetable. So Postmates, uh, the 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 uh, delivery, uh, I guess the delivery job that I had, um, turned to shit. Um, <laughs> worked for like four hours, four or five days, and uh, ended up just breaking even. So I figured that wasn't a wasn't a good use of my time. Um, and uh, I did I did look for jobs in Austin, um, but they would almost all require a two hour total commute every day, uh, considering my camp oh. location was about fifteen to twenty minutes north of Austin. And if if it's their nine to five jobs, you're going to deal with hour. And that's Without without traffic, it's basically an hour commute. But if you're if you're going north or south, uh, well, I guess basically north uh, north uh, basically, I think if I remember correctly, um, then you're you're going to be stuck in traffic. It's going to be it's going to be slow. It's going to be slow as hell. So um, I also learned that uh, if I was back in Southern Illinois, the new family business could be uh, put quite ahead of schedule. Uh, and after all, it's uh, good reliable money, unlike Postmates, which is uh, which was which was okay for like five or six months, but then everyone started doing it. And there just wasn't a, a whole lot of money in it, uh, as far as I could tell. As far as I could tell. So, I've been now back market, in. yeah, market saturation and whatnot kicks in after that long. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's 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 similar to that. And and for Postmates, actually, you don't even have to. Um, they do like a very, um, like a very loose background check, and they like mm -hmm. they 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 just kind of send you a bag and let you start delivering. 
Um, for other ones like DoorDash and Uber Eats, apparently they do a more stringent background check and um, they make you actually go to a physical office location or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Postmates is just so easy to get onto. Everyone was on there and there just wasn't a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of deliveries uh, available. So. <laughs> See, so yeah, I've been back at the homestead for a few weeks now and uh, have been making plans for what to do uh, when spring comes. Uh, obviously, a big garden and chickens are the short-term goals since I do have a chicken coop, a very big, nice chicken coop out front. Um, those are the short-term goals. And uh, in a couple of years' time, I would uh, like to be largely self-sufficient uh, and off-grid and have a whole lot of cool projects uh, going on here. So um, I will be uh, – so, yeah, in a couple of years, I'd like to have the permaculture farm going. But for now, since the, the most I've done gardening-wise was a small, I guess, like seven by nine, seven foot by 9-foot garden in my backyard in Bloomington. Um, and uh, I don't want to buy it off more than I can chew, you know. So um, <laughs> I, it's, it's going to be it's gonna be a lot bigger than the one I had in my backyard. But I'm not going to um, – <laughs> I'm not going to, uh, I don't know, expect myself to learn all of the ins and outs of permaculture farming uh, the first year. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the, uh, the, the, the short-term goal. So I'll, I'll kind of stop there and, and, and let you jump in, Jason. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been crazy. Yeah. I mean, and you, you and I have, have talked, um, quite a bit about the, the homestead and where you're at and what, I think it's a good path. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. You can, I'm, you can hear me, right? Yes. I okay, can hear you. I dropped for like a half second, but yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, there's been just like a touch of uh, um, um, not static, but like you get that robotic sound, but it, it it's just like a word or two and then it goes away. Okay, I'm cool with that. So, yeah, it's it's fixable. Um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say now. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, I guess that's, that's real. That's life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If that's the worst, or if that's the worst thing that happens today, we'll be we'll be all right. But uh, but yeah. So <clears throat> I guess in addition to just uh, not really knowing where I am half the time because I've moved so much, um, I've also been putting a lot of work in uh, on Liberty Interact publications. Uh, as of this morning, actually, two new books are available on Amazon: uh, Ben Stone's Sedition, uh, Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage, and Smuggler and XYZ's Second Realm book on strategy. Uh, and for those who may be curious, I'm waiting for the question to, to what, the question to arise. When I just start publishing other people's books, like, did you just do that, or did you actually ask for permission? No, guys, I ask for, <laughs> I ask for permission if I can. And everyone's been just like, yeah, I don't care, do it. You know, like, just just do it. Yeah. Um, now for hashtag Agora, kind of hard to reach out to anonymous, so I just kind of went ahead and unilaterally did that. But I figured the book was important enough. Um, uh, you haven't you haven't got any messages saying, hey, this is mine, take it down, blah 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 blah. No. No, no, definitely not. So yeah, I, I, I've, uh, I, can, uh, Smuggler and I are connected on Twitter, and we've also talked on IRC chats, and uh, he actually tweeted it out and said, "Yay!" So yeah, I have permission, guys. And Ben, yeah, Ben, uh, <clears throat> I actually asked him because I've been sending out free copies of his book with orders for other publications, and I ran out a little while ago, and so I said, "Hey, man, you got any of those books left? I'll, I'll buy some copies from." And he said, "No, I'm not gonna put them back in print." And I was like, "Well." <laughs> well, I have an offer for you. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, and and uh, I I I saw the the link you posted earlier. I shared it to the Bad Quaker Facebook page, and and I tweeted it, and it actually says Liberty Under Attack Publications on the cover of Sedition, Subversion, Sabotage. Right. Yes, and uh, that I is just ah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a ha that's a happy yell, by the way. Yes, yes, it's 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 a good thing. It definitely is, and and uh, I guess just for purposes of transparency, I didn't make any changes to it. All I did was uh, I think his I, my books are six by nine, his might be seven by nine or something like that. They're a different size, so I just reformatted it in a different template and uh, fixed some spelling errors that I saw, grammatical errors, and yeah, that's it. And added linear type publications on the front cover. So yeah, that's all I did. Um, now there's still going to be some other spelling and grammar mistakes there. I was about halfway through when I when I found this out from Ben, and I wasn't going to go back through and reread it again to find all those find find the errors. So um, there's still some there, but uh, you know it's it's readable. It's fine. Um, it's nothing like uh, like hashtag Agora the first the first edition of that. Um, <laughs> that was kind of a mess. Uh, so I do apologize. Someone actually cut, well, put a post in Amazon review, and I and I went back and looked at it, and I said, yeah, I need to fix this. So market feedback, you know, corrected corrected the mistakes. So. Um, there you go. 
There you go. But uh, yeah, um, in addition to uh, Sedition, Diversion, Sabotage, and uh, Second Round Book on Strategy, my book and uh, Hashtag Agora are also available. And uh, I've got some interesting ideas for Patreon here, Jason. I was thinking about this today. Like, I, I want to get people on board there, um, obviously. Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah, the goal for Elliot Publications is to release one book a month. Um, so if you contribute $15 a month, you'll get the newest publication mailed to you. You don't have to place an order or anything like that. It's just, just, just a cool book will show up to your house. Um, so yeah, simply for being a subscriber to the Vonnie Podcast. Um, so considering most books I put up are $12.99, uh, those are substantial savings, uh, especially if you're going to purchase them anyway, uh, and there could be multiple books a month. Uh, and yeah, eventually I like to migrate the subscription plan over to LUA and the TVP site, uh, but for now uh, this will work just fine. And uh, for the next few months, guys, there'll be a couple books a month. Uh, there were a couple books today, so um, yeah, there's a lot more to come. I've got a great graphic designer, a couple of graphic designers I can rely upon. Um, Miriam Sakraya, who's just done some fantastic work. She's doing uh, promo videos for for stuff too. Oh, she's and, um, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's great having creative minds because I'm not that creative. Like, I have some interesting ideas sometimes, but um, I basically just turn turn it over and say, you've read the book, come up with something. And uh, <laughs> it gets done. It gets done well. So um, it's 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 going well, guys. Uh, it definitely is. And uh, there's there's a lot more books to come, uh, most being, uh, you know, solutions, uh, various solutions, because Second Realm is a lot different than uh, than sedition, subversion, and sabotage. Uh, two very different strategies. But uh, we're all individuals, and uh, we have uh, our own our own preferences and uh, beliefs and all that sort of stuff. So there's uh, there's something for uh, for everybody. So um, <clears throat> I guess the last thing, uh, I promise. It's been uh, <laughs> ten, 11 minutes of, of, uh, of rambling. But uh, anyway, it's, we've, it's, it's we've been got, a while. We've got a lot to catch up on. It's okay. Yeah, I've been busy. I've been busy. So uh, for the past four or five months, well, I guess actually for the past 13 months, but the, the, the vision and the plan is uh, uh, the vision and the focus has narrowed quite a bit. Um, but for the four, past four or five months, uh, for sure, I've been working on a, on a project uh, with my team called Darklands. Uh, the idea is a privacy focused freelancing marketplace, excuse me, utilizing Bitcoin for payments and Scuttlebutt, a network protocol for the decentralized peer to peer network. We recently released the white paper uh, and would love for you to take some time to check it out. You can find that at tinyurl.com forward slash darklands white paper. Again, tinyurl.com forward slash darklands white paper. And uh, we're also currently looking, uh, currently looking for developers, community promoters, marketers, and really anyone willing to help us bring this project into fruition, even if you just want to come in and toss in some ideas um, or just come talk about Vonnie. Well, I don't care. You know, I just want to get that Discord built up, that community uh that's a kind of a Vaughn oriented Darklands community built up and, uh, you know, see this project coming to fruition because I think uh, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of potential there, uh, a lot of potential there. So uh, I guess, yeah, last thing for Darklands, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter uh, or Discord. Just go to uh, any of those first two outlets. You can find a link to the third. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all of the updates. Uh, so, yeah, Jason, did you did you have any uh, anything you'd like to discuss specifically before we get on to the main subject matter or uh, any comments on? Uh, the uh, you know, the long slew of updates. Uh, <laughs> so far. Uh, no, I don't really have anything to add. I don't really have any questions. Uh, you and I talked before show about what this episode's about, and I just I really want to get into that for a particular reason. You know it. Yeah. Um, indeed, indeed. <laughs> so yeah, let's get on with it then. Let's get on with it. So today's episode is titled "Coercion and Danger Are Everywhere." forever. It is largely influenced by the recent events in Acapulco, where uh, my friends Jason Henza and John Galton were shot, uh, John killed, and uh, also uh, and also Lily's life was completely turned upside down. Um, it reminded me of some discussions Rayo had in his writings. Uh, basically the idea that as long as human beings exist, there will always be coercion. There will never be a coercion-free zone. There will never be locations immune to danger and violence. And any notion otherwise is inherently utopian. In Second Realm Book on Strategy, the authors also mirror this idea. Smoker and XYZ write, quote, We are not going to progress into a utopian future where fraud, theft, and aggression disappear. Instead, we have to find ways to provide conflict resolution, enforcement, and restitution systems, end quote. Furthermore, when we examine Vani lifestyle changes, each of them comes with natural coercion. The, uh, you know, the, the elements, uh, the extreme colds, the extreme hots, the tumultuous and oft violent ocean, uh, vicious predators that can kill humans with ease, etc., 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 
So we'll begin with a brief overview of the recent events in Acapulco, a relevant sneak peek chapter from Ben Stone's new book, which offers a slightly different perspective, and uh, then we'll leave the rest of our allotted time today discussing the dangers and risks of living anywhere or pursuing whatever Vanu lifestyle. So, so yeah, I guess any introductory points? Anything you want to open with? No. No? Okay. So for those who, <laughs> for those who uh, I guess, didn't see the news, um, it would have been a, a few weeks ago. Um, gunmen either were outside the gate or, or I guess, uh, you know, uh, broke into John and Lily's house uh, up in uh, Acapulco, Be their beautiful house overlooking Acapulco Bay. Um, I don't know if they were inside, if they got inside or if this was kind of a drive-by shooting sort of thing. I don't know. Saw conflicting stories. We don't know what happened. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, Henza was shot three times. Uh, uh, John was killed and, uh, Lily survived. <sighs> So, um, <clears throat> that's, that's kind of it. Uh, that's, that's kind of it. It got picked up by international news. Um, obviously every American, uh, news outlet had to, had to pick it up and, you know, um, it has to, right? Because that shows how much safer America is apparently. So, um, yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's kind of it. That's, that's kind of what, what, what happened. And, uh, the, the, Aftermath of that is uh, obviously, as I said, the the American press outlets uh, obviously uh, uh, echoing that. Uh, you know, across uh, uh, as as far as they can. There were uh, a lot of folks in, in the alternative media and uh, anarchists that I saw who kind of made comments like, "Well, this is why you don't run to, run to Mexico for freedom, stupid." Um, and just a lot of a lot of kind of um, just kind of saw just saw a news article that say, "You know, crypto anarchists fled to fled to Acapulco um, and were killed." And like I just saw some some comments it's like you're oh you, god you don't you don't even know what happened you you have no idea what happened you have no idea what transpired you don't know what uh you know the the events that 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 transpired that's uh that's that's led to this happening so I guess the I guess the the, the point here to start out with is there are only a few people that truly know what transpired and why that fa uh you know why uh and, and why that happened that fateful day uh, and they will come forward with their story when it's time but until then speculation is worthless um. It's 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 just it's worthless. Um, uh, yeah, ass assumptions are the mother of all fuck ups. So right. stop assuming what happened. Yep, yep. I mean, there's. Uh, I mean, Jason, you and I talked about it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. A few days after it happened, and um, I refuse to speculate publicly, obviously. And uh, you mm -hmm. know, we're just trying. We're kind of uh, with the information I had available. The information you had available. We're trying to you know maybe come to some reasonable conclusion. Um, but we weren't jumping to conclusions like a lot of people were. Um, we were just trying to figure out what what could have happened and kind of the the various scenarios. Who could have been involved? Is there someone that needs to uh, put on blast? <laughs> um, I mean, we we none of that happened, obviously. But um, we uh, uh, you know we we definitely we definitely talked about it. Yeah, and it wasn't, and we didn't do so publicly. That's that's the other big thing. Like it wasn't. On Facebook, it wasn't. It wasn't like for everyone to see and for people to get the wrong impression, and for people that may have been anarcho curious to see that and go like, "Oh my God, the anarchists are killing each other!" Blah blah. No, we. It, that is a conversation that happens in private, and it should have stayed private. Those conversations, and not have been blasted all over social media. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of, uh, like, for example, uh, out of Ben's book, uh, the Committees of Vigilance, obviously they aren't going to uh, discuss their proceedings on fascist book. They're going to do mm -hmm. it in a private matter um, to figure out uh, what justice needs to be carried out, who is responsible, and uh, the, the restitution and all, the, all those sorts of things. So, um, yeah, those, those discussions, I think, need to happen in private, but uh, not uh, in the very public forum that, that they were happening. Um, but, but, yeah, the, 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 point, uh, the point for this episode is that Obviously, there's this uh, a lot of people from from the states who are saying that uh, you know Acapulco is so dangerous. You know, it's a lot safer here in the states. And and the, and the point we're trying to get across, the discussion we're going to have is uh, coercion and danger are everywhere forever. Um, so that's uh, that's 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 kind of the point here. Yeah. No. Uh, as you said, nowhere is totally safe. No matter where you are in the world, no matter what you're doing, who you're with, there's going to be things that could go wrong there's going to be some sort of coercive entity that is going to or that can possibly exert itself upon you uh, against your will it's that's it that's reality 
Like even even if you were the last person on Earth, you're still open to coercion. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's why uh, you know we've talked about this before in, in other episodes with I guess definitions and such. But um, but Vanu, I mean, defined as an invulnerability to coercion. Obviously, that's um, that's not possible. Um, there will always be coercion. Um, but the, mm-hmm. the the goal of Vanu is to become as invulnerable to that coercion as humanly possible. Um, so. Yeah, uh, I guess the, the, the next thing I wanted to, to kind of touch upon here um, is, <clears throat> I said it in the introduction, it's going to surprise a lot of people, but um, in, in, in a good way. Well, um, Ben Stone's working on a new book. Um, I didn't know this until about a week ago when he sent me a chapter, uh, sent me an unedited, unedited chapter of it and told me to do what I wanted with it. Um, so, yeah, uh, <laughs> I guess uh, I'll, read, uh, I'll read that now. And uh, the, the idea, I think, he, I think uh, this was kind of motivated by by these events i don't know for sure but uh, i think mm-hmm. I, I think this was motivated by those events and he kind of offers a different perspective um and one that's um one that i i, I certainly sympathize with so hey yeah good you for, forward this to me later mm-hmm. and uh maybe i'll put an excerpt up on the on the facebook page or something sure sure okay um yeah so it's uh so it's t- the uh, the chapter is titled the so-called liberty movements quote there is a relatively large group of people worldwide that self-identify as the liberty movement. They are quite diverse in their philosophy, their goals, their strategies, their lifestyles, their talents, their wealth and social status, their levels of education, their understanding of how the world works, and their levels of self-discipline. They are also diverse in their levels of honesty and gullibility. The last line is glaringly obvious if you spend very much time around, uh, around them while using an honest approach to judge their behavior. The vast majority of people calling themselves the liberty movement are good people with the best intentions. However, however, they allow they uh, <clears throat> however they allow to remain among their ranks a very small dishonest element made up of outright thieves, conmen, bullies, and even some violent sexual predators, and at least one murderer. As is usually the case, the scum tend to rise to the top, and they have done so in the liberty movement. These scum tend to have all the classic tendencies of a sociopath, and therefore often surround themselves with devoted followers who view them as a hero of sorts. The good people within the movement seem so desperate for numbers that they, on a whole, refuse to keep their ranks clean of these parasites, which of course makes their whole movement look bad. It also divides them into squabbling cliques that blindly and fiercely defend their hero against anyone from within the movement or without, that points out the deeds of these sociopathic scum. I must tread carefully here, as I don't want to sound bitter or angry because I am neither. I tried very hard to help the good people of the liberty movement, but they are determined to protect and maintain the parasites that feed upon the movement. So for this reason, I had to separate my soul from the liberty movement, as I could maintain a clean conscience while, uh, while associating with people who embrace such vile creatures. <clears throat> there are proven cases and even court documents showing that prominent and respected libertarian leaders, famous politicians, public speakers, and internet personalities have been guilty of rape, violence, theft, extortion, threats, election fraud, election fraud bribery, and lies. Money scams have been uncovered that generated millions of dollars, and several cases draining good people of their life savings, and yet the perpetrators remain in good faith among the liberty movement. Instances of bigotry, hate speeches quoting Adolf Hitler, and respected libertarians having co-membership in racist hate groups have all been uncovered, yet the liberty movement still embraces these vile people and continues to financially support them and pay them to give speeches at their events. Freedom cannot be achieved by embracing or even tolerating such people. In early 2019, a young activist was organizing a Liberty Anarchy event to compete with a much larger Liberty Anarchy event that was operated by a known con man in the same Mexican city. Gunmen arrived at the young activist's house and shot him dead, while injuring another activist. The known con man immediately jumped in front of the media and declared the shooting a drug cartel-related event, even though everyone close to the situation knew drug cartels had nothing to do with the killing. Still prominent leaders or celebritarians, as they are known within the movement, attended the con man's event in the shadow of the murder. Apparently, so long as the speaking fee is high enough, these celebritarians will step over the bloodstains to get their honorarium check. The typical, uh, <clears throat> the typical criticism of police in the U.S. today res- uh, revolves around the argument, that, uh, uh, argument of the bad apple. When an incidence of police brutality or corruption is revealed, the police supporters claim that cop is just one bad apple and the rest should not be judged based on him. However, that indicates they don't understand the principle that one bad apple spoils the whole barrel. The saying is very old and is a true statement based on placing apples in a barrel for long-term storage. If you allow just one infected apple in the barrel, it will in time infect every apple in the barrel. The same is true with the police. They protect their fellow police, and in doing so, they're all infected by his misdeeds. (coughs) Excuse me. Libertarians are very good at explaining the bad apple principle when it applies to police. However, due to the rampant hypocrisy within the liberty movement, they fail to apply the principle to themselves. 
It seems they have no problem shining the light of truth on, on, the, blemishes of, on the blemishes of others while failing to look in the mirror to check their own infected face. T.E. Lawrence in the classic movie Lawrence of Arabia said, Sheriff Ali, so long as the Arabs fight tribe against tribe, so long will they be a little people, a silly people, greedy, bar uh, barbarous, and cruel as you are. I have said the same about the liberty movement. However, the infighting is a symptom of the bigger problem of allowing and protecting the bad apples. Until the liberty movement cleans its own house, it has no rightful place in criticizing anyone else, and it most certainly has no ability to lead a movement toward freedom. End quote. So, it's a lot there, right? Uh, so, sorry, I had, to, I had to cut my mic. I, just, I kept laughing. Um, uh, that was absolutely bangerang. Um... I could not agree more. Also, uh, I, we all know, we all know the people he's talking about. We all know yeah. the people he he went. He did everything except like actually mention their name. We all know those people, and they do all have cult followings. They do all have their own white knights, and people adamantly defend these individuals, knowing that. They are exactly as, as Ben said, no, that they are crooks, they are liars, they are thieves. And people adamantly defend them because they don't want to rock the boat. Yep, gotta, gotta stay united, right? Oh my goodness. But yes, the, the, <laughs> the super relevant part here, and, and I, I understand where, I obviously understand the relevance uh, when it comes to this, because uh, as, as in our conversation, uh, uh, conversation, also the episodes that uh, we did on, uh, on, on uh, Acapulco, the community there, which are available on YouTube, and both are public now. Um, mm -hmm. There's one called Accumul Accumulating Anarchist Struggles, and the other one's Accum Accumulating Anarchist Warnings. And, I mean... That's uh, that's that's same same kind of things happen there. Now, is that related to what happens um, to to John and Hensa? I don't know. Um, not gonna not gonna claim I know. I don't know. Um, but uh, but you know he he does make a a good point that it, this was like the day of the event, and uh, the person he's referring to did go straight up onto social media oh. and claim oh, it, it was relevant. Big long post on Facebook about within, within, it within hours. Well, yeah, literally, literally within hours. Like, <sighs> yeah, uh, that one went around pretty quick uh, when he made that post. Yeah, um, yeah, and then he 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 deleted it and posted later that he thought like the news news agencies were scouring his Facebook to get the story, and that's you know maybe that's how that uh well, you know maybe that's how that kind of how that story you know propagated you know for in large part I don't know because um, he does have a huge following. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I wanted to read that because uh, there's that 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 one section there. Um, yeah, harsh. Um, you know, I always I always appreciate. Um, oh, it's not harsh at all. I mean, that was well. It's I, to to some people it may it may to, it may it may appear very very harsh, especially the last sentence about uh, <laughs> those that can't hand those that can't handle the truth need to hear it the most. True. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's uh, it's definitely true. So. So yeah, um, we'll have to wait and see uh, see what what what's, uh, what actually happens. Um, we won't uh, we won't we won't know until uh, the people that uh, were there and were party to it uh, know, or until they come forward. So <clears throat> yeah, I guess uh, you want to get into some of the dangers and risks uh, of living anywhere. Kind of expand this this conversation outward a bit. Uh. Yeah, we'll get to that. I just I, I want to jump on on a topic sure. on a not on topic real quick, but you, you mentioned the YouTube videos that that we did you and I with Henza, mm -hmm. and we talked about the 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 community down there and and uh, I don't want to call them bad actors, but the the certain people in the community, um, quote unquote anarchists that that aren't really anarchists that that aren't. That don't act in a, in a voluntarist manner and, and and have these sort of tendencies. Uh, one of the things that we really talked about that 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 Jason and I really really got into um, was the need for uh, what do we call it um, uh, like community responsibility or something like that. Um, not just shunning, not just like disassociation. Um, but being an anarchist and and being being freedom minded, um, 
trying to create a community, it it takes responsibility, not just individual responsibility, but there are responsibilities. Uh, the community itself, collectively, I know you guys absolutely hate that word, but collectively the community has responsibilities to protect the community from people within the community. Um, you can call it, you know, like a, a, an enhanced neighborhood watch program or, or, or um, vigilante justice or, or whatever, but every once in a while, the needs of the community have to be put have to be put before the the desires of an individual if 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 that individual is harming the community the community yeah, needs the needs to act in question are super dangerous or potentially yes. super dangerous yeah. yes the, the the community needs to act against the individual yeah yeah and, and i guess that's <laughs> i'm glad you brought that up because that was i i guess I, I forgot to put that put that point down in the outline but um i i'm not we're, i'm not going to say much else beyond this but go watch those videos and um it's you know anything's possible i mean there's there's a handful of scenarios that could have happened um and you guys are probably aware of, of most of them um but <clears throat> but anyway um it is possible that um the failing to root out the bad apples um had something to do with what transpired that day um, so that's why whenever, whenever Ben sent me that, I was like, wow, okay. You know, it's, it's just a, a better way of, a better way of putting a, a better way of, uh, of saying it than, than the way I was thinking about it. So Ben, Ben, Ben can write better than you or I could say it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He's had, he's had, he's had more practice. Yes, indeed. Indeed. So that's, that, that's, that's the relevancy, relevancy of that is that it is possible that the, the failure to root out bad apples may have had something may have some, had something to do with it maybe it didn't but it is possible and uh i figured for the uh just so it'd be entered into the public discourse i made that previously patreon only episode public um didn't make any comments beyond that but uh i figure uh in in the pursuit of uh of justice and rest and potential restitution yeah um it should, um, should at least be entered into the public record yeah one one quick note on that video um when you look at it the published date on the on the video it actually is the date that he made it public that's right. not the date that's not the date that we recorded it that we recorded it back in like december mid 16th i think yeah mid mid december um the video was made public on the day of the shooting and that that is the published date on the youtube you. video mm -hmm. um so that's actually like several weeks after we recorded it correct correct and um yeah, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up. So, I recommend you know just as with uh, with any investigation, whether it's one of uh, philosophy, economics, or true or otherwise truth, um, you, you know, uh, you know, make sure to, uh, to to try to get all the information that you possibly can before you come to a conclusion. And I'd say don't come to a firm conclu conclusion um, until it's... you hear the stories <laughs> of, if, until you hear, hear the actual story by people who who know. So that's kind of my I... disclaimer. Not, not, not to name drop and 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 to to plug another book, but the the book Dirica wrote, Dirica Klaus, uh, wrote a book about critical thinking. If you don't have the necessary information, you can't come to a truly logical conclusion. Right, and I'll I'll drop a link to that in the show notes for for people yeah. maybe interested. But yeah, that's uh, that's true. That's true. I think a lot of people just uh, um. I mean, and, and I understand. I mean, there were a couple of people I saw, um, which who I highly, highly respect, like great, you know, great crypto anarchists and such. Um, I saw them post stuff, and um, I know the reason that they did was because of the scum <laughs> that are at the top of the organization, that are kind of at the at the at the top of this kind of community sort of thing. And I agree with that. But at the same time, as I uh, um, when I kind of wrote about my reflections, some people in uh, Claire and Claire Wolf's um in her private forums they asked they're like uh you should probably do a write-up on this at some point because i kind of told my my introductory story and so uh, they're like you should probably do a write-up on acapulco because you know community building is important and uh, if there's anything we can learn so i kind of did a did a little write-up on it and um <clears throat> damn it i lost my train of thought but uh yeah yeah anyway i i, I did a write-up on there and um kind of just uh oh yeah i was talking about the uh kind of the uh the, the, the scum at the at the top of the organization or the, the top of the community um, that the, that a lot of those folks don't come out of their mansions down to down to the actual community other than a couple times a year for like the events and otherwise they aren't part of the community at all so um, yeah that's what that's kind of what I 
I I didn't I didn't see any of them when I was there, and so uh, people that I was that I hung around with never really saw them. They they'd been they'd been there for a while. So other than at those major events, so um, take that for 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 what it's worth. So so yeah, I guess uh, any anything else on that before we kind of move on move more more directly onto the Vani portion. Not unless you want to uh, mention Claire's write up on the books now that you dropped her name. Um. I'll I'll do that at the end. It's not really a, a okay. Place. Yeah, not really. A, don't want to segue. Uh, don't want to uh, segue to that yet. But uh, or actually, you've had that in the outline. But oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So um, so yeah, Ben's Ben's write up is relevant because it is possible. Um, you know, there are a lot of scenarios. Some are possible. Some are not. Um, and uh, there are some screenshots to support that. Again, going for evidence, but also waiting to hear the. Uh, a story from those who uh, actually firsthand witnessed and have that have that information. So, anyway, um, so now that uh, we've we talked about that and how um, people are, I guess, just claiming that uh, Acapulco is super dangerous. Um, well, I guess the as as the title of this episode, coercion and danger are everywhere forever. Um, so when it comes to uh, you know, living anywhere. Um, I mean, whether you live in, uh, I mean, it's just different risks, right? Um, so if you live in, if you live in uh, the USSA, um, you know, the, with uh, the United Police States of America, um, I mean, uh, you've got a, I mean, I mean, you're, you're, you have a better chance of being killed by a bludgie than you do of, uh, by a, by an actual, by a terrorist. Although I consider bludgies terrorists, but. Well, isn't, um, isn't it like, like eight to one, something like that, eight times more? I I don't remember the exact, um, but uh, <laughs> there's this um, uh, there's the I think it, was, it used to be a Tumblr blog. I think it's on uh, Facebook now, but it's uh, I, I don't remember what it was called. But they'd like give out statistics like uh, you know you're more likely to die falling off your couch than you are by a terrorist, um, you know things like that. But um, <clears throat> anyway, point point is yeah, in America there you know there there are different risks where uh, where you live. Um, so in uh, America you're probably uh, depending upon where you are, if you live in if you live in Chicago um, and you live in a bad part of it, you may fall prey to some some uh, some some private coercion. But you could also fall prey to some public coercion, right? So the bludgies. Um, if you live in uh, the Siskiyou National Forest or uh, I don't know Bella Coola, British Columbia, or somewhere like that, um, you'll f you you won't face a lot of private coercion, but uh, you could face the the natural coercion of the elements. Um, you, know, you might come across bears. I think there are bears in those areas. Uh, you might come across bears. You might uh, you know have uh, um, a winter day where it's like negative ten degrees, and that's that's pretty harsh. You know, that's uh, people that's could consider that to be you know a little naturally coercive, right? Um, mm -hmm. Could kill you. Um, I mean, there are different risks everywhere you go. Um, if you uh, are in Acapulco, um, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I guess one of the, the risks associated there is that uh, since, you know, it's <clears throat> the reason it's so cheap is because it's a, kind of an impoverished place other than, you know, main Acapulco. Um, I mean, one of the risks you face there is that if someone doesn't like you, they can pay someone a couple hundred bucks and have you killed. It's very unlikely that it'll happen. Um, it's pretty unlikely that it'll happen, but... Mm -hmm. That's something you. That's a, a risk you you may face there if you piss off the wrong person. Um, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of other examples here. Um, <clears throat> if you live in the middle of the ocean, um, if you live in international water, you know, well, I guess you wouldn't really live there full time. But if you're out in international waters for a couple of few weeks at a time, um, will you face any coast guard coercion? Probably not. Will you face any coercion from the pirates if you aren't in those couple areas where they're really really known? Probably mm -hmm. not. But if there's a storm out in the middle of the ocean and it flips over your boat, um, that's a risk. That's a danger, um, and it's you know it's 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 a different kind of danger, but uh, the danger is still there. Um, so, <clears throat> I guess I've I, I've been rambling for a little while here, but uh, I'll turn it over to you. Uh yeah. There's what what it comes down to, and this is something we, we've talked about before. Um, it's it's risk versus reward. Um. The, is 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 the risk of living a, a a stationary servile life worth the reward of the lack of freedom is is the risk of moving to Acapulco worth the reward of the added freedom that you get is is the risk of moving out into the woods in the middle of nowhere and living in a cave like Rayo supposedly did at the at, at the at the end of his book. Is it worth the reward of 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 
whatever. It, it, that that's entirely individualistic. Um, you cannot get away from risk. That that is a fact of life. As long as there, as long as gravity exists, there's risk. I mean, you can, if you're living out in the woods, you 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 can you can roll an ankle, you can fall off a cliff, you can have a tree fall on you, uh, you can tumble down, a, you can tumble down a, a a hill, you can fall in a in a river and drown. Um, if you lived in a cave like Rayo did, well, chances are. There's 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 an actual chance that the cave could collapse and and you could you know be killed that way. If if you live in a city, well, there's the risk of terrorist attacks and and police and 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 gangs and and whatever. You you could get hit by a cab or you could get attacked by a bear if you live in the woods. I mean, there, you cannot get away from risk. Simple period. That that's that's the end of it. You cannot get away from risk. But is the risk worth the reward right is, and, and is, we're also and we're also talking about probability and statistics here right uh -huh. i mean um so there was that uh, this would have been in the news a couple years ago i think there was this lady from australia it was in minnesota um she called the cops and uh, I, I don't think she lived here for very long but she called the cops and got killed um so i don't know if, if we're, they're australians saying minnesota is just a particularly dangerous place to live um i don't think it is um, she got, you know, she got really, really unlucky, right? Um, until she made the mistake of calling the cops, but, you know, her being a foreigner, she probably didn't, eh, she probably really didn't know any better, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I but, actually, but still, I, so yeah, it's, it's a probability and statistics uh, as well. Uh, like, um, you know, uh, you could, you could, you could go, you could go somewhere and get really unlucky and get, and, you know, someone, I guess, walk into a gas station, accidentally mm -hmm. walk into an armed robbery and get shot and killed. Um, yeah. I mean, is it you probably going to happen? You, no, it's probably not going to happen. You can step off a curb, break your ankle, develop sepsis, and die. Should we stop walking? <laughs> like, should we stop stepping off curbs? No, it that that's that's a risk that you take when you walk off a curb. <laughs> that's right. that's reality. Like, so, like silly, I, silly I, example, but yeah, yeah, it, exactly right. Yeah, it's 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 totally silly example. Like I I looked it up on on my phone the the terrorist police ratio and it, it is eight to one. But I also saw that toddlers killed more people in 2017 in the U.S. than terrorists. So oh. <laughs> there's there's is, is it's it's a greater risk to have a toddler around than terrorism in the United States. So. Right, right, and, and, yeah. I, and I think with like especially kind of um, my mindset when I went down to Acapulco and for others too. Um, I mean, obviously you don't know, you, you, you hear things and you kind of get, you get an idea, but you don't really know until you get there. Um, now I would say that, um, I mean, what did I feel, do I feel more safe here at my, you know, at my homestead, uh, you know, 30 minutes away from any major city? Yeah, I would say that I do versus, um, you know, downtown Acapulco or Bonfil or anywhere like that. I definitely feel more safe here without a doubt. Right. Um, and, uh, I guess the level of freedom is pretty comparable, I would say. Um, but, uh, you know, if I lived, uh, if I lived in, uh, a, a city, um, where I had to deal with a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of coercion, um, would it be, uh, would it be worth, um, I guess maybe giving up a little, giving up some of that security to have increased freedom? I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about here, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because yeah. they're, they're in Acapulco as a foreigner, I guess it's basically in Mexico generally. Um, yeah, you probably you probably face a little more risk, but uh, I mean, you have more purchasing power. First off, you have um, you can your money can go a lot further. Um, you don't have to really deal with um, <clears throat> you don't have to deal with um, taxation unless you're a resident of the United States. Then you technically are still supposed to deal with taxation. Um, but um, <clears throat> you yeah, you see, so you, you don't deal with taxation. You don't deal with property taxes. You don't deal with um, nuisance abatement. You don't deal with um, ridiculous barriers to entry, um, and, and, um, and, and, and some industries now, obviously it's, <clears throat> yeah, uh, anyway, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's different, right? Um, it's, it's different for some folks, uh, like the pe some of the people I met down there in Acapulco, um, I mean, they've never had any problems, not a one, mm -hmm. not a single problem, uh, and they love it. Um, there are others who have gone down to Mexico once, got kidnapped and killed, um, there are others who have gone down to Mexico, gotten kidnapped, and uh, you know, held for ransom. Um, I mean, like people, some people have had bad experiences, but um, but again, I think it comes down to probability, probability and statistics game, and also the skill sets you have when you go into these locations. How well do you know the area? Um, 
uh, do you know what parts are safe and what parts what parts are safe and what parts aren't? It's like Chicago. Um, you could probably move into a suburb outside of Chicago and be particularly safe. But if you move into a bad neighborhood in Chicago, bad things could happen. Um, furthermore, I guess, do you understand uh, if you're if you're a black market, so if you're you know an agorist or an ethical enclave trader, do you understand the risks of uh, competing with the cartel? Um, not recommended. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's ba and and also too, I guess, uh, um, which I think Vaughn could really help help some some help some folks that uh, decide to. Well, that's why that's why one of the Vaughn uh, strategies is perpetual traveling, um, just being able to know how to blend in, um, being able to, um, you know, not not go in the, not go into uh, uh, you know bond fill with like a three thousand dollar suit on, like that'd be really yeah. stupid. You're a prime target for for you know for for mugging. Um, yeah, great, the gray gray man theory. So, so, so yes, I, I think Vanu can help, uh, can 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 help and provide a lot of safety in a lot of these a lot of these circumstances. Um, so, yeah, what do you have? No, what what you're talking about is, it, it's, I I want to say it's common sense, but it, it's it's really not that common. Like, um, if if you travel into a new area, like even even if you're just go in there for for uh for vacation I, like reality if 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 you were security conscience or or privacy conscience like if you're traveling anywhere you're you're, you're going to know well not you're not but you're going to you're going to at least look into the area that you're traveling right like if 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 I'm if I go somewhere on vacation like I want to know some history some some um some things about that place that I'm going to, like I, I, I want to know what's a bad area, what's a good area, the touristy spots, the the, the places that a tourist really shouldn't go. Uh, it's the Acapulco is the same way. Like a, a, as you talked about, there's there's good areas, there's bad areas. Well, there's also good and bad areas of Chicago, of New York. There's good and bad areas of of, of my city. There's there's places that you can, in my city that you can't go into safely, wearing the wrong color. That's 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 reality. That's that's the, the the coercion that one exposes themselves to when when traveling into an area that they don't know. Um, so places like Acapulco, uh, they're really no more safe or dangerous than anywhere else. All you have to do is is have the knowledge to stay out of the not safe areas and keep your head on a swivel and and use common sense. To, to try and stay safe. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, <coughs> and I want to I want to emphasize this point again that, um, that there, there are a lot of folks here in the States um, that wouldn't that don't want to do perpetual traveling. Um, they don't want to travel to Mexico. They don't want to travel over to Europe for, for whatever reason. Um, and, and that's obviously fine. I mean, they, to them, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, they might be comfortable with uh, the States. They might be used to it. They might, uh, they might, yeah, they might just feel more comfortable at it. Nibbler, shut up. Um, <laughs> sorry, kitty. Um, she's loud. <clears throat> but um, I, I don't know if you can hear her, but yeah. She, I, I did, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's annoying. <clears throat> She's looking for attention, but uh, <sighs> but yes. So that yes, there are a lot of people in the states that are just uh, you know a lot more comfortable with it. They don't they don't really want to go anywhere else. They're, you know they realize the inherent tyranny. Obviously, the, some of these folks realize the inherent tyranny, and they just uh, you know develop a lifestyle or they uh, uh, choose a volume lifestyle that uh, makes them more vulnerable to said coercion. And that's great. That's why uh, perpetual traveling isn't the only strategy. Uh, when it comes to Vanu, um, for some folks, the, uh, the the travel and the expatriation is 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 huge. Um, for people who have a lot of money, um, it's very beneficial uh, to exercise something like the five flag theory, um, where you have your place of residence in one, you have the place where you make your money in another, you have um, the place where you spend your money in another. Um, you can read about it in my book, Vanu's Strategy for Self Liberation. Uh, tinyurl.com forward slash self liberate one. I talk about that uh, in decent in decent uh, in decent depth. But um, so it's 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 all about uh, preference and uh, your certain, uh, I guess, life circumstances, and uh, and that sort of stuff. So if it doesn't appeal to you, if you don't want to go to Mexico, then don't. <laughs> <laughs> then don't. Um, it's, it's it's that easy, right? It, it really it really is that easy. Like there there are risks there are risks living in Acapulco. Absolutely. 
but there's also risks living on a homestead in Southern Illinois. There's there's risks living here in the San Francisco Bay Area. It it's it's the amount of risk that you're willing to absorb. That that's what it is. If 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 the the, the freedom if the if the rewards the freedoms out reward outweigh the risks, and that's acceptable to you, cool. If if the risks outweigh the rewards, you know, and that's again if that's acceptable to you, then. So be it. That that's one of the great things about Vaughn. It was it's entirely individualistic. There's there's no ten steps. There's no package. You know, twenty nine ninety five. This is how you're going to be free. That that doesn't exist. There yeah, are and anyone who tries to sell you that book is full of shit. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but if anybody is selling that book, it's like, it's contact like those, it's contact like Liberty Liberty Under Attack Publications. Right, my my, my publisher anyway. <laughs> Um, kidding, but it's like the sovereign citizen, like those seminars that they used to have in the nineties, yeah. where they'd sell you like uh, th- all of the all of the documentation to free yourself. Just fill out this paperwork, and and the cops can't touch you. I, st- I still paper. I still get those uh, those emails. Do you want to stop paying income taxes? These are the words you got to use when you're in court. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. <sighs> anyway. Um, yeah, and, and I guess I guess something that people might th- that that people might uh, and and again I mentioned Claire Wolf and and, and my uh, and my little write up my my three or four page write up on on my experiences there, in the uh, in the community, <clears throat> I kind of put like the, the last paragraph was kind of uh, just an addition like, uh, do I think I'll ever go back to Acapulco? Um, I don't know at this point. Um, Kind of, uh, uh, am I am I generally uh, like in Bonfil? Was I ever um, fearful of my life? No, um, I wasn't. Um, I, I, I definitely wasn't. Uh, didn't feel at any risk. The locals were really really nice. Um, as long as you can go out to go out to go out on the beach at night, you're fine. Um, that's kind of uh, that's kind of kind of my experiences. <clears throat> but then again, um, the pictures of the house you saw. Um, you know where where uh, where this uh, this attack took place. I spent a lot of time there, and if I would have been in Mexico still, if I would have decided to go back uh, right after the holidays, I probably would have been there with Enza. <clears throat> it's a very very good chance. So um, it's that's that kind of um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's just kind of that's uh, like it, it's just something I, I don't I don't know how to put it into words, man. I'm sure you, like it, it's just kind of. Uh, I don't know. It was it was a close call. I guess is the best way I can put it. Yeah, and and again, it, it, the because it happened, because it happened to your friends, because it happened that a place that you had frequent, frequented, and and it was a place that you could have actually been. Like you could have been there when it happened. You know that. I don't. Know, it it kind of it it makes the uh, makes the makes the the dog seem bigger than it really is. If if that makes sense, you know, and there there are, there are risks, of course. I mean, we've talked about them, but there, as we talked about, there's also risks living on a homestead in Southern Illinois. I mean, you can, you said you're what like half an hour from anything. Well, you can cut your leg with a chainsaw, or 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 you know, cut your shin open when you're splitting firewood, or you can step on a prairie dog hole and and break your ankle, or there's. Yeah, you can I'm hit at, a, I'm at, you I'm can, at the yeah. place now where if um, like if someone gets in a foiler accident and it's a little ser- and it's pretty serious, like they've got to be medevaced uh-huh. out. Like they gotta, they, yeah. they got to bring I, a helicopter in. Like yeah. you, you, they, there's there's a hospital <laughs> there's a hospital like 45 minutes away, but typically they take you to the places like an hour and a half away because they don't have yeah. stuff to deal with the the serious sort of stuff. Yeah, so, you yeah. can you can hit it like you did hit it or you you could hit a deer. You could hit a deer driving in and. and you know, in the the backwoods, you know, like there's a gravel roads, right? Um, or even when you were trying to get there, there was flooding, right? There's ice and flooding, like so. There, there's risks in southern Illinois that could be life threatening, just as there's risks in Acapulco that could be life threatening. Right. It's is is the is the the reward of being here greater than the reward of being there. I don't know. That's that's up to you. That's entirely individualistic, right? And and I guess another point I'll make is uh, I, I I kind of alluded to it a little bit a little bit earlier on, but uh, some of the folks, uh, you know, some of the folks were basically they're 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 completely adverse to Acapulco because of the people involved. 
um, because then less uh -huh. people involved. Um, so they think just any adventure at Acapulco is just stupid. Like, you know, people that go there are just dumb. Um, it's kind of the, I guess, the, the, the feeling I get. Well, a lot of these people also yeah. also vehemently despise the fascist state project, right? Um, but they don't criticize people who move to New Hampshire. And obviously, we're talking about different risks there. But uh -huh. um, I think you can get where I'm going with that, right? Um, yes. So, yes. So, yeah, the, 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 the uh, FSP Board of Trustees is very, is very tyrannical um, in a lot of ways. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of political crusading going on. A lot, a lot of stuff that's that's you know very very disagreeable for a lot of people. But when someone decides to move out to New Hampshire, I mean they aren't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's just kind of a, a comparison. It's it's a it's a comparison. Might not be a very good one though. It, it's it's a fair comparison, but it's not an entirely accurate comparison. Um, if we're if we're I mean, talking only about the figureheads, if we're talking uh, only only about the figureheads, there, but obviously Acapulco yeah. is different than different than Key in New Hampshire or Manchester or anywhere like that. Well, yeah, and the the environment is different. the The situation is different. Um, what it's surrounded by is different. the The laws that are in the laws that are enforced in Mexico, or the, the, sorry, the, the the coercion that is enforced in Mexico is a lot different than. The, the coercion that is enforced in, in New Hampshire and yeah. Right. So yeah, maybe that, maybe that wasn't the best example, but as far as criticizing people for going somewhere because of the figureheads involved, um, I think that's applicable for, for New Hampshire too. But, mm -hmm. um, but then again, there are a lot of great people in New Hampshire. Um, lots of great people in New Hampshire. Uh, never been mm -hmm. out there. Probably won't, probably won't go out there because I, I just, that's a long drive for me and I don't know if it's necessarily worth it. Um, but you know, there are a lot of, I met a lot of great people in Acapulco too. Met a lot of great people in, uh, in Michigan, met a lot of great people in, um, met some great people in Texas, not as many as I'd like. Um, <laughs> but I mean, regardless of the location, there's always, always good people there who, uh, come there for, for different reasons. Um, so, so yeah, I guess the, the, the general gist of this, uh, of this episode, or I guess our conclusion is, um, it's, it obviously depends upon the individual. Uh, it depends upon uh, if uh, it's it's worth um, you know maybe trading some security for some freedom. Um, it's is it uh, worth uh, is 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 that risk risk worth reward? As as you kind of uh, talked about often in this episode, um, it's very much uh, very much indi individualistic, and um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of uh, kind of the point of Anu. So um, yeah, I I don't really have too much I don't really have too much else at least off the top of my head. But yeah, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add on that. I think we've kind of beat beat that horse. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So, um, yeah, I guess the only, the only I guess the only uh, <laughs> risky stuff we really didn't talk about were uh, for seasteading and space steading. Uh, but obviously, the seasteading ones are are kind of uh, aligned with uh, the ones for minimal sailboating, but also um, risk and danger from nation states. Um, Space steading is yeah that's well, that's more the whole slew of different risks and rewards right um, yeah a whole bunch of different risks a lot more <laughs> severe risks but none that I none that uh, many of us will will have to uh, even concern ourselves with in our lifetimes so yeah um, I guess that's uh, I guess that's about it <clears throat> looking through my outline seeing if there's anything else uh, that I wanted to mention here. Um, uh, yeah, I guess in, in conclusion, uh, the task of Anuans is to choose a lifestyle change that is attractive to them and of which they are suited for. Uh, this enables the Anuans to minimize the danger and risk of coercion wherever they decide to do and whatever that they decide to do um, wherever they are. So, um, <clears throat> and also, one other closing thought, a complete and vulnerability to coercion is also utopian. Um, so, as with the title of this episode, Coercion and Danger Everywhere, Forever, is just about minimizing the risk and minimizing um, the coercion. So, uh, what are your closing thoughts, man? I don't really have any. All right, all right, very good. Well, I guess I guess uh, before I forget, I'll mention that uh, Claire Wolf, um, who I'm trying to remember, I'm pretty sure I've mirrored a couple of her articles, or maybe something from Backwoods Home, um, but um, she actually. Uh, posted an article, I guess it was kind of a reflections on libertarian anarchism, and she was looking for something on Vani, but couldn't find anything until she found 
Avani podcast website, and she kind of linked to it, and I was checking the stats, and I found a ping back to it. So I went and looked at it, <clears throat> tried to find a way to get in contact with Claire because I wanted to send her a copy of my book, and um, found her private forum, signed up, and you know gave her answers, which she knew she knew who I was. And then uh, we started emailing, sent her a copy of the book. She wrote, uh, um, I guess she put up two posts promoting it. One's, one was more so a book review, and the other was... <clears throat> I guess kind of, uh, again, more more kind of uh, reflections on Rayo and Vanu and her path to where she is today. Um, so, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend, uh, recommend check those out. Um, it's clairewolf.com slash blog, I think. Um, I'll put links to those in the show notes as well. But uh, uh, certainly appreciate uh, a huge honor for her to uh, – she had so many nice things to say. And uh, considering she's, uh, she's kind of a – she's a pioneer uh, when it comes to this sort of thing. Uh, it was a, a huge honor and uh, certainly do appreciate it if she does end up listening to this podcast, which I don't know if she will. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess that's a wrap. Uh, a couple other, I'll, I'll kind of, a couple of reminders before I let you go. Uh, please consider becoming a patron, patreon.com forward slash Vanu. Um, I will get around to adding that uh, Patreon tier for uh, LUA Publications um, that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Uh, you can also purchase the books right now. Uh, just visit libertyunderattack.com, which um, I've made, I changed the homepage to the store because Liberty Under Attack Radio is dead. Um, I put out the first post about it um, this past week. <clears throat> it's a very sad, sad week, but it was it was already dead. I had just had to make the announcement. I wanted to get to four years, though. <laughs> I wanted to get to the four-year anniversary mark before I announced it dead. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so yes, libertyunderattack.com is now just the hub for Liber Liberty Attack publication. You can still find all the uh, all the archives there. Building the Second Realm. Um, direct action series, all that sort of stuff, and uh, it's just uh, not on the homepage. So, um, yeah, if you go to libertyunderattack.com, you can find uh, the Amazon links um, to the books, and you can also purchase um, the books through the through the LUA store if you want to use Bitcoin or just don't want to support Amazon, which uh, mm. I wholly support, um, whatever you yeah. decide to do. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, anything else, man, before I, uh, before I close this out? Uh, you can also, on Amazon, you can just type in Shane's name. Shane Radliff and um, the books will come up. Yes, uh, most of them will come up. The ones I wrote forwards for, or the ones that I wrote something mm. for. Um, not all mm. of them will. I think uh, hashtag Agora won't come up with my name. Um, but I think, and and also Seditions Version and Sabotage won't. Yeah, that's under Ben's name. Correct, correct. And I, did, I was going to write a forward for it, but I just wanted to get it out because I, mm -hmm. as I expected, when what that's it's actually getting shared around quite a bit. And uh, you also notice if you're on Fascist Book. I was surprised Facebook let me do this name change, but Liberty Under Attack is now Liberty Under Attack Publications. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's it. A lot of uh, a lot of shit has happened. It's crazy. It's crazy. But uh, I'm loving the I'm loving the direction of things, and um, obviously uh, um, I, I've mentioned it before, but at some point I'll do a live stream uh, a live stream at the homestead. Um, I've just been waiting for the weather to kind of cooperate. Last week there was a day where it would it would have been perfect. The, the, the weather is like it was like 50 degrees outside. But it was windy as hell, um, and the microphone—you really couldn't hear me that well. So, yeah. Um, when the weather cooperates, I'll do that uh, that little uh, that live stream, and uh, yeah, lots of lots of more interesting uh, interesting content to come, and uh, some more great books uh, to be published under Liberty Attack Publications. Uh, so I do recommend you go check those out, LibertyUnderAttack.com. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, and always remember, Vonnie was yours for the making. Until next time. Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon.